there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World. Today, we are in the Veneto region. We're between Padova and Vicenza here in Veneto. And we're actually outside the, the Villa Contarini, one of the most famous palaces here in the Veneto that was not done by Palladio. And today what we have are basically tips and advice for traveling in your 30s. And the first tip I have for you is do it. Go travel and go where your passion lies. Look, it's time for you to explore and see the world that you've read about and learned about and saw it on TV. This is your chance to go out and do it. So go out and do it. And what I say is when you're in your 30s, you have passions. There's things you believe and you want to know. For me, I have so many Italian friends and so many Italians have been wonderful to me, to me throughout our trips that I want to come back here. So we come back again and again and again because our passion lies here in Italy. One of the reasons we come to Vicenza, Jocelyn, her background is historic preservation, architectural history. Well, Andre Palladio is one of the most influential architects in the last 500 years, and he's from Vicenza. So we go and we explore these things that call our passions to us. If your passion is beer, you know what? Why not take a Czech trip? Go see Pilsen, the birthplace of Pilsner beer. Head down to Munich to have the Hofbrau House and things like that. But go travel and go find where your passions lie and go and enjoy those things. My second tip for you is realize that you're in your 30s now. Hostels are not for you. I know hostels have gotten better. They have nicer rooms and, and they have family rooms and stuff like that. But let's be honest. Do you really want to share a room with eight other people? Do you want to be that guy at the hostel that looks kind of weird? Look, you're 30, you're 35. It's time to move on. It's time to stay in hotels, okay? You can get much more bang for the buck because now you're in your 30s. You're making some money. You can enjoy things. So the hostels, look, it's no more for you anymore, okay? We were out of our 20s. And one of the things out of your 20s is you got to realize is you're not a backpacker anymore. Our third tip for you is bring a good suitcase with good wheels. You can drag it around, no problem. Because the thing is, when you're backpacking Europe or you're backpacking South America, when you're young, you are backpacking. You're going day to day to day to day stuff. So you gotta go, go, go. When you're in your 30s, usually you're traveling more longer periods of times in cities and towns like that. So you can take a suitcase, you can drag it around. Look, you're not as young as you used to be. And when you're lugging that big suitcase around, guess what? Your back starts to hurt in your 30s, okay? So just know, get a good suitcase that you can drag around, some really good wheels. We actually use an Osprey bag that can be used as a backpack, but we use just the wheel part of it. And it's something that I swear by, okay? So that's my next vice is move on to the suitcases. My fourth tip for you is make sure you're reading the reviews. Now, I know you can go online and book every hotel you've ever wanted and all those kind of things, but make sure you're actually reading the reviews and see what the comfort level is because that back and all those kind of things, you realize that a good bed makes a big difference. So make sure you're reading the reviews, figuring out which places have the best beds for you, but also where that bed is located. When you're young, you don't mind taking the 30 minute train ride in from the hostel way out of town. Now look for the beds that are in a good location, that are comfortable, the good hotels that are comfortable for you in the center of town. So you're not wasting your time on that 20 minute bus ride in or 30 minute train ride in into the city, okay? My fifth tip for you has to do with souvenirs. Look. It's, you're, you're done buying the little magnets. You're done buying the, the cheapo tchotchke souvenirs. It's time for you to buy real stuff, buy real mementos, whether that's paintings or pieces of art or something that really is something you can use in your home when you go there. When we come here to Italy, we have so many bowls and plates and shakers and stuff like that that look amazing from different parts of Italy that we use in our everyday life. And start getting those souvenirs that are more of those mementos that you see, but you actually can use and integrate into your life. Because when you're in your 20s, you're buying bottle openers and t-shirts and stuff like that. And you don't really use those as much when you're older and they end up being a souvenir you use for six weeks and then get rid of and throw away. Find souvenirs that are gonna be something that means something to you that you can share in your everyday life and it makes a big difference. Yes, it costs more, but you know what? You're making more money so you can get a better souvenir. Now my sixth tip for you is bring the little or big ones with you. Yes, bring your kids with you when you travel. Because you know what? I meet a lot of people that say, oh, I'm gonna wait to take my kids. Oh, my kids, they won't appreciate when they're young. Caleb, do you like going to Italy? Yeah, he's, he's going, yes, I do. He likes going to travel. Iceland and Costa Rica, pretty cool. Yeah, and when you travel with your kids when they're young, you're preparing them to be better travelers later in life. Because if you wait until they're in junior high, what 13 or 14 year old wants to go travel with their parents? Not cool. But if they've been traveling together with their parents since they were little, hey, you know what? 
they enjoy traveling with you later in life. So you want to make sure you're doing those things. So yes, bring the kids. Don't just leave them at home. Well, sometimes you can if you need those romantic getaways, but I always say it's make sure you take the kids because it makes it much more of a great experience for you with your kids, the memories you have and things like that. Now, my seventh tip for you of traveling in your 20s is it's time for you to start visiting the slightly more expensive cities. Now, when you're 20s, you don't got a lot of time. You got a lot of money. Your 30s, yeah, you still probably don't have a lot of money, but you have more money. And now it's okay to start visiting the more expensive places. Yes, you can go to the Copenhagens and the Stockholms and enjoy them. You can see the Switzerland. You can go to these places. You don't just have to go to the cheap trip, you know, going to the Canary Islands on that last minute deal where you're, you're sharing a room with 20 people. You can go out and spend more money and enjoy these bigger cities out there so don't be afraid to spend a little bit when you are in your 30s because it's time for you to step out of the cheap backpacker mode into a hey I'm more of a seasoned traveler let's see some more stuff get more out of it by spending a little bit more money and my eighth tip for traveling in your 30s is don't be afraid to rent an apartment and stay somewhere for a week or two. Look, I know when you're younger, you're like, okay, I want to do 10 countries in, in 12 days. You have that go, 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 go mentality. When you're 30s, take the time to enjoy those places. Find a place like a Paris or, or a Vicenza or wherever where you can make a base and go explore from there. And then you can come back to your apartment and enjoy that. And what I see from some people is they get kind of worried. Well, do I rent a, what if I rent a car? Yes, you can rent a car, you know, from 25 up or younger, you can rent a car and go around, but don't be afraid of renting the cars. Don't be afraid of renting the apartments and making a base for your vacation and your trip and then going out and exploring places by that. Because there's a lot of cities where you can use a Airbnb or whatever, an apartment stay and go see lots of other places. You know, we're going to Munich soon. We based in Munich, we go to Nuremberg, we go to Bomberg, we can go to Regensburg, all kinds of great places right by there. If you're going to, you know, Paris, you can go to Versailles, of course, you can go to Fontainebleau. You have all these great places nearby and you can stay in an apartment, have your stuff laid out. You're not worried about all the tension of a hotel. When do I have to be out to clean? When do I not have to be out to clean you have all these things out there so those are just you know eight quick tips for uh traveling in your 30s if you want more tips for traveling in your 20s or baby born travel tips check us out on our website at waltersworld.com we're also on twitter facebook instagram and we really appreciate your likes and subscriptions and we say bye from the veneto region here in italy ciao